Hey guys, so this is the last and probably for me, the most interesting installment of the MIDI Qual series with Tim Posney. In, in this episode, we get into visual effects and exploring MIDI's like interactions with other modules to, to automate those effects and even show you how to make some effects yourself. So just a reminder that this episode is broken up into chapters. So, you know, feel free to navigate around or come back to topics if you need them. So uh, without too much preamble, let's pick it up with Tim. All right. So that really covers the core of the features of what you can do. I guess the trick is knowing how you can combine some of these things to have other feet to implement features, which is a bit of a learning exercise. So, so for example, long sort of wounding, that's one that does damage apply, um, and then wounds the target has to make a saving throw to end the effect or keep on taking damage repetitively. Mm. There are quite a lot of things like this that do damage over time. So I've implemented a feature called overtime effects, um, which allows you to model those. Lots of stuff in the documentation about it, but I'll just go through this one. Now it's the wounded effect. It's a flags over, sorry, it's an overtime MIDI qual flag. It says at the start of the turn, Apply the damage before the save because you're always going to take the damage at least once. Mm -hmm. The label is wounded just so that you know what's happening in the screen. The damage roll is 1d4. Type is necrotic. needs a saving throw DS of 15 and it's a constitution saving throw. So if let's go ahead and hit our spider. And he is in fact too far away. I forgot to move up close to him. <laughs> Your module's doing to doing its job. Oh yeah, it infuriates me. <laughs> All right, so we managed to hit the spider. So what's happened? It's applied the effect wounded, mm -hmm. which is now on the spider. You'll also see how there's the one there. That's an integration with status icons. Oh, okay. And so if we hit again, let me revive the spider. Points, yeah. yeah, let me revive him. So now he's got two doses of it. Now advance the combat tracker until his turn. All right, so what's happened here? It's put up wounded because that's what the effect is. Mm -hmm. And it's been triggered by the combat tracker advancing. Got and then does it, does it uh, prompt the spider to make a saving throw at the end of the because turn? Because it's a spider, it does it automatically. Ah. I know what's going on. Bear with me for a sec. Sure. Tim, I think you need a search field just to find settings. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting that way. There's certainly a lot of them. So what I wanted to highlight is that after it's done this, the spider succeeded on its saving throw. Mm -hmm. And so it removed the effect. Ah. And all you had to do was advance through the combat tracker. Great. So those sorts of things are very useful for damage over time. You don't have to write any code to do it. Mm -hmm. You can just edit the effect like I showed. Um, and it solves a whole raft of problems like that. It's amazing. The other things that are worth, well, there are quite a few other features still. One that I did want to mention is um, the use of macros to enhance effects. So for example, there's a feature called sneak attack. It has a passive effect. This is something I've created. It's not available um, out, of the sh out of the stock. Okay. And its effect is to create a damage bonus macro on the character. Okay. Now damage bonus macros are macros that get called every time the player makes an attack, which hits. Okay. And it allows you to configure extra damage that you might not be able to do with just the standard fields. Okay. So let's attack our spider. With a different weapon. Um, we'll use our short sword. Okay. Oh, I should have turned single card back on. 
Anyway, so what's happened is the thief has used his short sword. Mm -hmm. The attack has hit. It says so there. It's done its damage, normal, and then it's done the bonus sneak attack damage of the extra 76. Did you have to what? enable that uh, effect for sneak attack, or how did sneak attack? So if you, the answer is no. So the way to use it is to... It's in the MIDI qual pre-made item, so I'll just bring that up. Oh, sorry, the sample items. Uh, class features. So you see in here there's an effect called sneak attack. Okay. If you drag that onto your actor and the actor is a thief, then it will mm -hmm. do sneak attacks whenever they meet the conditions. So, like, they've got advantage, there's a friend nearby. Wow. All the, all, it checks all the conditions for sneak attack to apply. Really? Gosh. Yeah. Um, so what that it, does come out of the box. That it comes out of the box with MIDI qual, yes. Okay, but so what's the thing you said doesn't come out of the box? Um, okay, so what the sneak attack macro does by hand, by default, is prompt you if you want to use your sneak attack. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you're only allowed one sneak attack a turn. Yeah. So if you've got multiple attacks, you you know, they're using two M's, you might choose to apply it to one or the other. Mm -hmm. So in my game, the players found that fairly tedious. So there's another feature called auto sneak attack. And if you drag that onto the actor, as well as sneak attack, then it will skip the dialogue. It'll just do the first one. Okay. And it'll only allow you to do one sneak attack per turn. Interesting. So it just waits for the first hit and then it'll apply sneak attack then. Correct. If those are both attached to your player. Yes. Okay. So that's one sort of macro. It's called damage bonus macro. The sneak attack macro is a little bit complicated. So there's a fair bit going on. Indeed. However, what I wanted to highlight is just this. When you write a macro a damage bonus macro, all you have to return is something very simple that says the damage roll is some text string, which is a normal D&D &D, um, roll, mm -hmm. and the flavor, which is whatever you want to have. So a wow. text description. So you can write your own macros that do something much simpler than that macro would. Yeah. Um, so it's well worth getting, into use to, getting used to macros. Interesting. There's one more macro feature that I did want to highlight because it turns out to be useful for all sorts of stuff. It's the on use macros section down below. So that's added to the item sheet. It's not a core um, feature. Okay. And what it lets you do is to specify a macro to run at various points during um, MIDI doing its stuff. So for example, I might decide that like I could apply a token magic effects filter here as an example of a macro? The answer is yes. It's not quite so straightforward. Hmm. The, if you wanted to do a token magic effect um, always, is that the, what you'd be looking at? Sure, I guess. Then the easiest way to do that, sorry, I'll have to edit the item. Or it might be just after a hit or something like that. So the answer is yes. Inside the macro, you could just do the token magic call itself. Mm -hmm. yep. You get past a whole lot of information inside the item macro to tell you who was hit, who was missed, who did the attack, et cetera, et cetera. So there's mm -hmm. enough information to say, yes, I'll apply it there. Mm -hmm. The other way of doing it, which is probably easier, Sorry, I'll just set this up on the fly. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the Warhammer. So all I've done is copy this Warhammer across. I need to do that so I can add an effect. Okay. And I'm going to say it's a macro dot token magic. Ah, right, because you call out the token magic effects filters here. 
Correct. Um, but if I, I created don't... a custom filter or something like that, and I had a, my own custom. So long as it's registered with Token Magic, it'll pick them up. So when you create the custom effect, you can tell, tell Token Magic about it. Then this will pick those up as well. Oh, I didn't realize that. He says, hopefully. I'm pretty sure it does. Huh. I don't know. Blur. So what I've done is I've added an active effect, which has a macro. If I now... If I now equip that on my character... And we'll go up and attack the spider. The spider's having a really bad day. It certainly is. You'll see that now this token has been blurred. Love it. And that's pretty straightforward. There's no coding. Um, it's just point and click. That's great. Now, does MIDI work with some of these other things I see, like Sequencer, and you've got some really crazy effects from JB2A? Is there any interactions there? Oh, yes. There's huge numbers of interactions. Um, a lot of it, there's a module called Automatic Automations. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll probably need the Token Magic Effects Delete Filter button. No, I, I shouldn't. Think, uh... That's not supposed to be the case. Hmm. Oh. So what is meant to happen, and I'll have to chase up what happened then, is when you apply the effect, let me just go through it all again and show you. So I hit the spider, it's put the blur, and it's put the, in, in, uh, inventively named new effect mm -hmm. on the spider, and that effect is what applies the token magic field. Mm-hmm. If I remove that effect, either by deleting it or having it expire at the end of the round, mm -hmm. so what happened then is I advanced the combat tracker, mm -hmm. got to the point in the combat tracker where the new effect was removed. The side effect of removing that new effect is it undid the token magic effect. So you don't have to do anything with token magic to get rid of them. Okay, you, you, you're you automating the, the removal of the filter. Correct. Right? Got it. We were talking about automatic automation. Oh yes, of course. Who's the developer behind that? Do you remember? I don't, but I'll if you give me 10 seconds, I'll, I can find it somewhere. We have corresponded. I offered to help out with the automation, but it turns out no help was required. He's done it all himself. So what happens with automatic automations is it picks up events that um, MIDIQOL generates and then triggers JB2A effects. Hmm. So one that I like is... Uh, that's Odegon. Odegon, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. Hmm. So... The combination of uh, animation and MIDI qual means that those stuff happens just by clicking a button. Hmm. You don't have to do anything else. Um, and it all happens pretty seamlessly. So there's no setup. You just have to install automatic Correct. automation. There's no setup at all, and those just happen. Fascinating. So what's um, it tell, maybe unpack the interaction. Are you, are you telling it what the distance is? Is MIDI telling automatic automations what the distance is? and other things really like, not what's, directly transact well there? interesting enough i haven't done anything to make that happen other mm. than <laughs> providing a, a a hook that says this is the point in the workflow that i'm up to mm. so for example i've just rolled the attack and then what happened auto automatic automations picks that up i haven't looked at his code but i suspect what he's doing is picking up the attacker and the target from the information that's passed to him mm -hmm. and working out the distance and yeah. then choosing which automation to apply. Mm -hmm. It's all pretty cool, actually. It's amazing. And if it misses, then the end point of the effect will um, be away from the token so you can see that it missed visually. Oh, great. So you can see it go wide. That's great. Exactly. Um, 
There was one spell that I wanted to show off. Was that Spirit Spirit, spirit Guardian? Guardians? This is the one that you pulled out of your MIDI sample items? Sample items, items that's okay. correct. There we go. So what that's done is it's using the automated animations to mm -hmm. produce this. The um, It's a, actually a sequencer effect using JB2A. Is sequencer installed also then to make yes. that work? Okay, so automatic, yes. automatic automations works with the sequencer. Correct. So, I mean, yeah. automatic a or animations, JB2A and sequencer are sort of a, a threesome that you install all of. Okay, great. It's kind of like levels, better roofs, and wall height. To Correct. Yeah. And MIDI qual, DAE, and time's up. They sort mm. of go well together. So what this does is, apart from being pretty, it's the giant spider's turn, so we'll move him in. Oh, so boy. what happened is he's moved inside the Spirit Garden's radius. Mm -hmm. I've used a module called Active Auras. Mm to apply an effect when he's, cl when he's close enough, which generates a damage roll. And it then means that he's taken damage automatically from being inside. Wow. And again, you just installed Active Auras. There was no necessarily any setup to make this nope. work. Okay. No. But it is Active Auras is required if you want to automatically detect distance and calculate the Correct. Damage. Okay. Uh, well, Active Auras applies effects to tokens that come close enough. Mm. So one thing that I haven't mentioned is, for example, see how when I move Luther around, the blue dots disappear? Mm -hmm. That's Oath of Protection. So he has Oath of Protection. It's an Active Aura. And so whenever f allies within 10 feet get uh. close enough, it gets applied to them. And the effect that it gets is to increase their saving throws. Ah, amazing. So, for example, their saves go up by five. Um, and one that I started to edit earlier that's not required. Did this also come out of your... Um... Companion? Yeah. Compendium? Yes, Aura of Protection yeah. is there as well. Right. Again, there's no coding needed to set it up, though. Yeah. The other thing that I haven't mentioned, which is probably worthwhile, is concentration. Oh. So MIDI supports concentration automation which means a few things. First of all, it applies concentration when you cast a spell that needs it. If you take damage, it works out that it needs to do a concentration, sorry, constitution saving throw and does that automatically and removes concentration if you fail. And it also notes all of the effects that are related to the concentration. So what I'm going to do is remove concentration and everything wow. goes away. The hmm. effect on this character, Spirit Guardian, the effect on the spider, Spirit Guardian, and the sequencer effect, they all disappear in one go. So it's wow. actually quite convenient. Wow, that's amazing. Um, it's actually a plus because the sequencer effect is a so-called global effect, and they, they typically don't get removed automatically. Uh -huh, okay, great. And that applies whether you, you're using concentration or not. Any Anytime you cast an effect, which is a sequencer effect related to um, something you've done, when that effect is removed, it will remove the sequencer. So oh, I, no, sorry, I did forget one oh, more, yeah. which is active token lighting oh. that's supported. So you can create active token lighting effects as things that items do. So for example, so what happens is I have a thing called a ghost lantern, which has mm -hmm. an effect that when activated, adds dim and bright light, sets the animation type and so on and applies that to the actor that's carrying it and that all happens just by equipping the item quickly go over bardic inspiration now in the um compendium there's a bardic inspiration which you can just drag and drop what that's done hopefully is created an effect on the character called bardic inspiration dice and what that does is keep track of the levels of the bard and work out what sort of bardic inspiration dice they do. 
okay. i.e. 1D4, 1D6. And so once it's on there, you don't have to change it. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is grant Bardic Inspiration. And so you'll see the um, automation, uh, sorry, the automation animation uh, mm -hmm. apply. Mm -hmm. This guy's now got Bardic Inspiration on him. And if he goes ahead and attacks the spider, it prompts to say, do you want to use Bardic Inspiration? Uh -huh. You can add 1d6 to your roll. Well, I got a seven, that's not very impressive, so I will. And I suspect it missed. And I've used up my Bardic Inspiration, so it's gone from the character sheet. Fascinating. And it, it's configured to know the different places that you can add Bardic Inspiration. So if you're attacked, you can add it to your armor class, I think is one, or that's Valor. Um, you can add it to damage rolls, etc. So it keeps wow. track of all that. Um, to be honest, there's very little macros in this stuff. In fact, none from recollection. Hmm. So it's really just a question of getting the hang of some of the special features. This uses the optional feature. Um, wrong one. So the mechanics are when you use Bardic Inspiration, yeah. it consumes a resource which can be set up. Um, if you've got enough, then it applies the effect Inspired, which looks up the Bardic Inspiration dice, which is the other effect I showed you to work out what sort of dice to roll. Yeah. And then applies an effect on the actor um, to their attack, their save, their checks, and gives it a label so you know what it's called. Wow. And then when it does the workflow, it'll pick up that one of these is present, prompt you if you want to use it, decrement how many you've got available because you can have more than one, and then keep on going. That's amazing. Wow. It's astounding how much uh, you've been able to automate that and these other you know, really complicated things that you know, I, I, I just, it, it's, it's incredible. Well, Tim, this was great. This was exactly what I was hoping for. Oh, I'm pleased. Thank you. Um, now, you know, I'm sure this will generate other, other questions and ideas. I apologize in advance for that as uh, all the commenters uh, come in, but I mean, this is yep. really amazing. And I, you know, I don't know if this level of automation is, is possible in other platforms, but it just seems like Foundry, uh, you know, when you look at all of these modules together to be able to automate all of these things and add animation and add, you know, uh, conditions yes, I and agree. effects, it's just, it's just mind blowing. So anyway, thanks so much for making My pleasure. Time. Appreciate you, uh, you doing this. We'll, we'll see if there's not a, a follow-up session after this. Uh, sure. Certainly I want to look at DAE together because, uh, you know, that's its own thing. Um, but this was great. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very uh, much. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. We'll talk to you next time. All right. Cheers. Bye. So that's it. You know, special thanks to Tim again for letting us open up his head and peek inside and for giving us some great direction on a module that most of us, certainly for myself, have been underutilizing before now. Uh, Tim and I are already planning on a video for dynamic active effects modules, uh, uh, which he's, he develops. So subscribe to this channel if you want to get an alert when that comes out. But if you have specific questions about MIDI, uh, let us know in the comments. Or if you want to see a specific follow-up video on MIDI, let us know that too. In the meantime, I hope you have fun with MIDI Qual and don't be shy about letting Tim know how grateful you are for uh, all of his work to make our DMs lives just a little bit easier. And, uh, and thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you guys immensely. And I hope you have just a little bit more inspiration for your next game. Uh, so take care until next time. And I'll see you soon.